Hey guys, we're here in Central America. We're out adventuring on a little expedition, doing some exploring, got the expedition vehicle. And really quickly, I'm gonna get into all the gear, all the daily carry stuff, all the tools and equipment and all the real man stuff, I guess you could call it, that we're, we're, we carry on, on the daily basis here when we're out in expedition. Like I said, we're down in Central America. It's gonna be a relatively long video because I'm gonna talk about all the gear in the truck here, in the Bone Tactical Land Cruiser all the gear as you guys can you know, see in other videos i'm going to put even more videos up talking about the whole exo cage and all the features of the vehicle itself but right now let's get into the gear okay this this back section here this tailgate doubles to drop down as you can sit cook prep area all that kind of stuff but the the bed itself is a work truck type thing i can use it for when i need to move material around do all kinds of stuff but i also have these boxes here that carry all of my gear okay all of my gear and equipment that i need to keep down here kind of put out so i'm going to go through all of the basics and why i have everything i have these are two fuel filters okay for standard fuel filters for the vehicle this vehicle has what is arguably and in my opinion but it's very hard to say that anything is better in in the terms of reliability the most reliable uh, diesel motor or really motor at all for that for that matter that's ever been put into a vehicle. The 1HD Toyota motor is a diesel and it's low horsepower, high torque, really just a, a, a smaller diesel motor but incredibly reliable. It'll go forever. It wouldn't be crazy if I put a million miles on this motor. So we've got the fuel filters here. Um, those are those are spare fuel filters. I've got the toy. I always use Toyota brand or a, or a reputable high brand. I use. Uh, I'll show you what I use for oil in a second. But Toyota brand oil filters here. Always using the oil filters that are that are called for. Okay. So as far as that goes, I, I keep a lot of the fluids that I need in the vehicle. I keep brake fluid as well. You might think. That why do you have brake fluid? It's a brand new truck. Well, I was on expedition not too long ago. Hit a branch in the road. The branch flipped up and ripped off one of my brake lines. And in a, in a matter of very little time, I had almost no brakes. So was able to, to fix that on the side of the road, put some more fluid in, and keep going. Um, I, I always run oil, only Royal Purple Oil. I used to run Mobile One in the past, but I just feel like I get a little bit better uh, performance out of out of Royal Purple. And I want this motor to last forever. It's a brand new, I bought the truck brand new. So in order for that to happen, I'm gonna try and make that happen. And in order for that to happen, I, uh, I'm running, I'm running Royal Purple. So you, you really guys, maintenance is a huge factor. Another thing a lot of people don't understand is that you want to have a, you want a motor uh, that is not heavily modified. The reason I haven't put a turbo on this truck or haven't done any kind of crazy mods to the motor itself or powertrain is because you have issues when you start modding on you, reliability is key and king for an expedition vehicle you start having issues if you start doing all kinds of crazy race car mods you don't want your truck to have to be in the shop when there's no shop around i keep uh the gear fluid for the to put in the axles if there's a problem i also have breathers on all the differentials okay so that's differential fluid and it's possible to suck water in if you don't have those diff breathers. It's possible that anything could happen. You could suck water in even if you do, but but I've got it. I'm protected there with the diff breathers and then ARB diff breathers, and I'm also protected an extra step if I have to drain and put in some more put in some more fluid. I can do that. You guys know I'm a big proponent of high lift jacks, okay? Vehicle recovery. So you'll you'll notice a lot of this stuff in here is gonna be vehicle recovery. Give a shout out to high lift, okay? This is a high lift jack plate. When I'm jacking up my truck off-road in sand or mud or wherever it gets stuck, if this thing gets stuck, it's going to be a nasty area. I need a base plate like this to put under the jack so the jack doesn't sink into the, stand, into the sand or mud instead of jacking the truck up. This can be used as a shovel, too. You guys can see this is used and abused, okay? I use my stuff. We're out here beating the crap out of this. I've got probably five years in two different vehicles, at least, that this has been in. 
uh, probably maybe longer now. Uh, high lift again. My high lift tool kit here is uh, also on the on the terms of vehicle recovery. You guys should be taking notes. I'm talking about maintenance and recovery so far. I got a sledgehammer. I've got gloves, road flares. This is a collapsible. Okay, it's collapsible. I put these two pieces together. And then I can fit a shovel, an axe. I've got a, a lock, a bolt cutter in here that's extra that didn't come in the kit. I've got two pairs, three pairs of gloves, road flares, and tire plugs as well. So you guys want to have vehicle recovery in mind when, when doing that kind of stuff. When it comes to vehicle recovery, guys, it's very important to have tools, okay? So I've got extra hammer. I've got this here. Uh, hack, hacksaw and some hammers, okay, that are also here. Keep these in this bag just to keep them clean and easily accessible. All right, I've got two of these custom-made bone tactical tool carrier kits, okay? I've got two of these with every tool that you can imagine. If you guys are taking notes, if you're if you're wanting to know what expedition tools you need to carry, you need to know whether your truck is, you need to know what common bolts your truck has, and then you need to get, you need to have crescent wrenches, okay? All the wrenches you need, sockets. I got all my sockets and Allen sockets in here. Show you guys just, it's, it's also used and abused. We use this stuff, but it's nice, leather, handy, very, very easy to take care of. You just fold it down like that, roll it up, heavy duty leather and canvas. And uh, I've got a few of these. So like I said, I've got two of these. I'll show you the other one as well. And these both contain between these and what I'll show you in a second, pretty much all the tools I need for anything happens on my vehicle on the side of the road. I drive careful. You got to take care of it. You don't want to act like a maniac. I've got all kinds of center punches and hole punches in here. I've got uh, your standard screwdrivers, the rest of the wrenches that I didn't have in the other, the smaller size. I've got a screwdriver with all kinds of tiny fittings. Uh, electrical wire stuff. Vice grip is very important. Okay, so I've got all the, all the stuff that you might have to have when your when your car breaks down or if you have an issue I've got socket sets as well okay extra socket sets standard and metric that I keep in the vehicle you guys know what this is if you know what beadlock wheels are got to give a shout out to method racing method race wheels they've hooked me up with the with the wheels for this expedition vehicle build and it's very important that you keep your bead locks to a certain torque spec so i've got the torque wrench here and i keep them to the specific torque spec that i need to keep them to in most of central america for legal reasons you've got to have triangle uh all this crap fire extinguisher and different things i keep the triangle in there just just because of that but honestly i'm probably going to end up taking it out i just don't feel like it's been a, a great benefit having it in there and 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 dealing with police you can if you're wondering about dealing with police and legal issues about having certain things like for example a chainsaw is illegal to have here but the way that i need the way that i search for my wood and i'll show you guys another video we'll do a We'll do when, where we go out and end up searching for wood and and uh, and we find fallen logs and dead wood in the in the forest and cut the heart of it out because we don't want to promote deforestation for our knives and tools. For example, this is rainforest mahogany right here that I sourced myself here where I'm at right now from a dead fallen rainforest tree. It took me several days to get out there, find it and cut it and all that stuff. And, and that's, guys, that's just why we do what we do. We, 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 we're doing everything, trying to be the change we want to see in the world. But, for example, it's illegal for me to go out there with a chainsaw in my truck. And it's also illegal for me to cut the wood, even though it's dead and gone. But there's some things in life, guys, that, are, that might be illegal, but that aren't necessarily immoral so, or wrong. And, and that's one of those things. Here we have all kinds of government corruption, and a lot of times the legal, things that are legal or are... Or, or, are bad things and things that are illegal or good things is just crazy but you gotta 
you gotta have your own moral compass and guide in those situations so let's get back to the gear so back to the gear we've got in this box i've got my uh tire deflating stuff here okay so this is to let the tire pressure down i've got little deflators here and then in here i i've got a gauge to see what the tire pressure's at why do you why do you deflate tire pressure okay let me show you something real quick over here the the when you when you let the tires down the the actual tire itself gets wider okay and you get a lot more grip on the road and a lot more off-road traction you can even use these side logs to grip as well and and i'm running wide tires they get even wider and you get a lot more traction if you let the air down you do way better off-road when you let the air down in your tires another thing you need in order to have a really capable vehicle that you can let the air down in your tires on is a compressor i've got my compressor here the vi air compressor you can see it's all hooked up the tank is under there the compressor is under the hood and the switch is right here so i just flip this switch and the the compressor will will automatically kick on so that's uh that's something you guys can check out if you want to see i'll do some i'll do a dedicated video on the vire compressor as well but this is a lot of the compressor stuff i've got two winches i've got a winch front and back in order to double the efficiency of a winch you can use a snatch block so you carry a snatch block a snatch block doubles the efficiency and the pulling power and the strength of a winch so you want to have a snatch block uh i got the the donkey appendage i'll say it in polite terms and that's for for my gas cans jerry cans to pour gas into the truck i've got the jerry can holders here you can see these two these two things right here i've also got extra winch straps in here and uh zip ties i use these heavy duty metal insert zip ties i i first started seeing them being used by the u.s government overseas and then recently i've seen them uh, I've been just using them myself for the last several years because they're just amazing. I use them to attach a uh, kit to my gear to my kit and stuff like that. Different, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Molly and everything. So I've got some other tire plugs and stuff in here, but this is basically my 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 inflate deflate bag for, for the tire pressure and all that kind of stuff. I've got all kinds of straps in here. Tie downs and straps. This is all tie downs and straps. Okay. So check that out as well. I've got rain gear. Frog Togs is my favorite rain gear. Fire starter, always good to have. Not that you want to use it, but it's more for an emergency. You always want to work on your, your bushcraft and your survival skills for when, for when you can. And this stuff, guys, we're on expedition right now. So when you leave, everything's very organized and very nice. And then when you actually get out and start doing it, everything just gets in total disorder. Uh, this order then it's uh, <laughs> it's uh everything gets a little messy and and torn up but this is kind of my extra stuff bag i've got jumper cables i've got all kinds of super siphons one for gas one for water and a pump one for gas one for water i've got uh different waterproof bags some heavy duty duct tape black tape different things like just reach in zip ties random stuff like that and uh and power and extra power backup power inverters and different things just kind of a, a extra bag that uh that that i keep some extra stuff in this is a carry more sf i want to give a shout out to to these guys for hooking me up with the bag as well it's uh i like it a lot i've been using the bag now for five years you guys can watch the first video that ever went up a long time ago so drawer number one is complete and again, guys, it's very, you, you see these cutouts up here, all these holes and everything. You see that this is aluminum. Everything's kind of light. You, it's very difficult to, when you build an expedition vehicle, you want to just put all kinds of stuff on there, but it's a bad idea to just put all kinds of stuff on there. You got, it's, weight is the enemy, okay? So you got to realize you got to get everything that you need and everything that you want, but you also want to go as light as possible. So and space is difficult you got to realize what uh what you're doing and what you're looking at so let me go through this one as well this drawer as well and uh and I'll, I'll i'll talk to you guys a little bit more about some of this stuff so tell you real quickly i've got bad knees from you know kickboxing 
uh, bull riding, all kinds of different, you know, fight sports, and then the stuff I've done in the security in industry and, and uh, you know, personal protection, military contracting, private security, all that kind of stuff uh, has just destroyed my knees. I've got no meniscus left in my knees. I've got a bunch of problems with my back herniated, bulging discs. I've broken my back at T5 transverse process and, and just kind of rehabbed myself on all that stuff. But it has it's 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 implemented itself in that I can no longer uh, sleep in an Eno hammock. Eno hammock goes down to this big. Now I'm at the point where I'm older and I just really want to enjoy a night's sleep. So I, I bought recently, a couple, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, the Mac Daddy of beds. This is the Mondo King 3D from Thermarest. This sucker's comfortable. You definitely you can see that's how big it packs down. You can't backpack with it. But if you've got your own vehicle and you're vehicle camping, it's something you can do. I use uh, Optimus for all my cookware and camp gear. Right now I've been using them, been working with them, and uh, this is all titanium and it weighs nothing. Okay, so you want to get titanium cookware when you're when you're really getting serious. You want to end up getting that. So you guys can see these bags, these different bags on on the website. They've got their own reviews, but. I will briefly go through what's in these bags. This is my three-day pack setup, okay? If I need to, with the addition of that cookware, but if I need to grab a bag and go for three days, this is the bag I grab. I've got a knife sharpener, water purifier, paracord in this pouch, okay? I also live out of this bag when I'm, like I said, I've got the cookware in here, so when I cook, I just grab the cookware out of here. I've got fire starters, MRE spoon, and another knife sharpener in this one okay always keep my fire starters double bagged in two different plastic bags i've got gloves and a and a brunton heavy duty brunton compass in here <clears throat> for navigating and and uh, i keep a new pair of gloves that i don't use for if i actually actually have to you know crap hits the fan and i i'd like to have a nice new pair of gloves to ruin uh toilet paper absolute must have I, I've got these lock sack bags that are pretty heavy duty. I use the lock sack bags uh, because they're heavier than a Ziploc. Um, over here, extra pair of socks. And a mosquito headrest. When you're in jungle climate, guys, a mosquito headrest can be a lifesaver. If you've got full mosquito body gear, it can give you the chance to even sleep under the stars, depending on how you set up the rest of your camp. So, we also have here... Uh, I've got some Thermacell insect stuff that's for emergencies I use just because it's so expensive. I've got my multi-fuel stove from Optimus. I've got more cookware in here. Like I said, I keep this in here. It's I don't use it, but for emergencies, the Thermacell, because it's expensive to just keep replacing and using every time, but they work amazing insect repellent, guys. It's the best out there, Thermacell. Uh, I got a pillow here for comfort. All my camp cookware, medical kit. All right, if you want to see the rest of the contents of this bag, guys, then basically go and look at the review. This 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 bag review is, is on my channel. I've got a video up of this bag, okay? Toilet paper is a must. Always, always, always carrying toilet paper. This is my 24-hour go bag, okay? This bag here, I've got headlamp, antiperspirant, uh, scent-free antiperspirant, Face mask kit, if I just got a grab and go, another compass, camouflage duct tape. It's kind of a more clandestine type bag. It's got all my camouflaging type gear. Uh, also camo gloves, pair of gloves, face mask, Israeli bandage. I don't have a full medical kit in here. I just have an Israeli bandage. Another mosquito uh, headrest, but a camouflage one, like a hunting gear style. So this is really just a real basic. If I'm, if I'm going to scout, this is a scout bag. It's on the scout. The contents of this bag are also fully detailed in a review on on my channel as well on the scout bag so if you guys want to see that check out the scout bag but I, if i'm gonna go walk from the truck and come right back in the same day i grab this bag if i think i'm gonna be three days i grab the other bag or more than one day i grab the other the bigger bag this is the tent this tent guys i've been using and abusing and testing we just packed it up in, in the bag just now and i'm gonna give you the name of it because it's awesome and they actually i got a I, my my gear uh, industry pricing, but I didn't, you know, I didn't ask them anything special. They didn't give it to me for free. It's a, it's a copper spur HVUL uh, two person. I've obviously I got it in the green rather than the orange to be a little more uh, incognito if I need to. 
but um but it's it's amazing man it's just an amazing tent it's got the uh it's got the full you, you can see in the other video i reviewed it on but it's got the full uh mosquito netting here so it's just a hot environment tent it's in my opinion it's the best backpacking slash camping tent that you can get as far as uh a two-person tent goes it four four tropical environments always have at least one tarp i've been using these for everything going through them i usually keep two in here i've only got one in here right now which i need to repack like i said when you're on expedition gear starts to get light i've got all my food in here guys a bunch of food all freeze-dried food okay bunches of freeze-dried food a little bit of mountain house mostly alpine air and uh and some fruit freeze-dried fruit so the freeze-dried fruit is for fast access and then the the, the freeze-dried meals are for when you have time to cook all you got to do is boil water and pour it in there and they're great meals the alpine air tastes way better than the than the mountain house i like them a lot better this is my medical bag guys i need to paint either paint a red cross or put a bunch of red tape on here in a cross pattern or something to uh to show to designate it as a medical bag but this is all my medical gear i've had to like i said again on expedition stuff changes i've had to redesignate and repurpose this bag to become a uh a medical bag so i've got all my medical kit in here and that's everything guys that you can see how much gear this is that i carry in the truck um basically it's a, it's a lot of gear it's a lot of stuff so um these three boxes i i also put on the back of the truck but uh, you don't have to have any kind of boxes like these. I don't have a freezer because I like to be able to use my truck also uh, to, to be able to, for it to be modular. I like to be able to use it to work with, to carry steel if I'm going to be making knives or anything, you know, setting up or building a new facility. I, I like to be able to put guys in the back, whatever I want to do. So I have the Yeti cooler. Um, and then this is just some of the gear I had on me. We got some of our products stuck up, stuck up here on the table that we're out here testing and using. And uh, gotta give a shout out for the new El Sicario shirt. This is the new style. Uh, these are gonna be in stock and shipping probably at the time of posting of this video. I've made them a little straighter here so they fit a lot better, okay? I've taken the sleeves up a little higher here. And guys, I'm, uh, I'm right now I'm like 225. Uh, um, 6'3", six, six, about 6'3", six, 225, and this is a medium, okay? I, I'm currently producing larges. I would normally wear a large. If I'm going to be going out, like, athletic doing something, I would wear a large. I just throw in this medium because I don't have larges, but you see, I could actually, I mean, it's going to be a little tight, but I could wear it if I had to, and if I have, if I'm going to be wearing gear uh, kit underneath and stuff like that, like, uh, I wear an extra large. With an extra large, I can even have my my plate carrier because I use minimalist gear. I can have my plate carrier underneath and uh, and all that kind of stuff. Guys, if you haven't heard of this yet, the EDC throwaway, it's the best value for a knife on the market that you can get. Just absolute awesome blade. You can use it any kind of way in here, okay? And great grip on the handle, stainless steel, not gonna rust, easy to resharpen in the field. You saw I had my knife sharpeners. So be sure to check all this stuff out. And thanks for tuning in. Questions and comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see more of. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Bone out.